I'll let you know, in addition to being a red carpet hostess, I'm also an actress. Okay. And I, as you see, I can look, I look good in blue. Very um, good so, yeah, like my agent, I, you know, yeah. Self-promotion. Hi. I respect it. <laughs> You're hilarious. Laverne Cox hosting red carpet coverage at the Golden Globes Awards. Did you have fun? I had a blast. So much fun. And I hope James, Cam James Cameron calls me for the next Avatar. James Cameron, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Laverne taking the opportunity, of course, to advocate for a role in the upcoming Avatar, which I, I would have done the same thing. He's making thing. a whole bunch more. You have to yeah, advocate yeah, for yourself. Yeah. I look great blue. <laughs> Laverne, it's called knowing your value. you got to yeah. know your value and Amen. communicate it effectively. She is no stranger to breaking glass ceilings for over a decade. She's broken barriers for transgender actors in film and television. As a star on the award-winning show Orange is the New Black, Cox was able to showcase her range while putting a spotlight on transgender issues. She's also taken her talents to the red carpet, hosting E! News, Golden Globes coverage. In addition, she has focused her celebrity on the issues, becoming a leading activist for transgender people in America at a time where nearly a dozen states are looking to strip health care access from thousands of people and the actress and advocate joins us now. It's good to see you. It's good to be here. It's good to see all good of morning, you. Thank Laverne. you for having me. So I'm I'm curious about your advocacy um, and like when for you did your struggle lead to success and learning to advocate for yourself because now you do it so well for others. I I I, the first protest I went to was in 2001. Mm -hmm. for, I'm 50 years old. A trans woman named Amanda Milan had been murdered here in New York. And I remember that was the first sort of protest and vigil I went to. And so my entire life, adult life, I've been advocating. I remember when we were trying to get human rights protections for um, yeah. trans folks in here in New York City in the early 2000s. I was at City Hall testifying. So going to um, Albany. So it's been a part of my life before I was um, well known. It continues to be a part of my life and I'm exhausted and trans people <laughs> are exhausted yeah. but right now it, there's just a lot going on and what really has called me to course is this latest bill from um, Oklahoma that would ban gender affirming care up until the age of 26. For years we've been hearing from anti-trans pundits and politicians that this is about children, this is about protecting the children but I think what this Oklahoma law reveals is that it's never been about the children. It's always been about scapegoating trans people, stigmatizing us and criminalizing our existence, making us not exist and we have um, pundits, um, anti-trans pundits and politicians on television every single day saying horrible things about trans people on the internet saying horrible things about trans people things that are leading to bomb threats mm -hmm. at the Boston Children's Hospital um, the Haya Rychik the um, founder of Libs of TikTok um, took credit for that bomb threat and also um, um, had pr um, boasted proudly on Tucker Carlson that she has communicated with Ron DeSantis' um, administration and that her work her anti-trans propaganda work led directly to the don't say gay bill. So the way we talk about trans people and with trans people in the media has an effect on these policies. A lot of the ways in which we're seeing trans people be talked about on the internet and in the news, those exact ways are finding them there. Um, that language is finding its way into legislation. So I wanted to come on today for all of those people who have the best of intentions and want to support trans people, don't know the right language, don't know how to talk about it, or scared to say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. We need the right language to combat this. They've um, anti-trans folks have been setting the agenda and how we talk about this, and we need to take back the narrative and we need to do it right away because it is what is it? Um, January 19th, and there have already been 151 bills targeting trans and LGBTQ people introduced in state legislatures just this year alone, 151. It's January 19th. Wow. So if you want to sort of get, if you have to get an education to some of these folks who are using the wrong language and saying the wrong things, what would it be? And I'm not language police. First no, of all, I'm not into censoring people. But it's for understanding. But if we are interested in 
the humanity of trans people and understanding that we exist. What I would first of all say to all the people, there's so many wonderful pundits and politicians who say, well, gender affirming care for children, that's something that we should debate, right? Children mm -hmm. don't know. And I would actually disagree. I would actually say, hashtag, it's none of your business. If you are a parent with a trans child, mm -hmm. It is your business. I think the American Medical Association, the American um, Academy of Pediatrics, the Endocrine Society have developed wonderful protocols that have worked for treating trans children. And parents who have, are dealing with that can go and get that information. If you're a parent of a trans child, it's your business. If right. you're not, it's none of your business. What adults do with their bodies is none of their business. We're, this is America. It should be about freedom, bodily autonomy. I'm firmly and staunchly pro-choice, and we should have the right to do with our bodies what we want to in America. And even for children, that's their parents' um, business, it's their doctor's business. It is not a legislator's um, um, business who has, doesn't know anything about it. So what I would suggest, because when, whenever we're debating whether trans folks should have access to health care, we're objectifying them. When we see um, senators in Supreme Court confirmations talking about mutilating children, we're objectifying children, talking about children's genitalia, which is disgusting. And when we objectify, we dehumanize. And that is what this whole project has been about, not making trans people real people, human beings who exist. I exist. There's no trans question. I'm not a question. I exist here. There, I have a material reality, lived experiences. And trans people have always existed. And we're not going to stop existing if people don't teach about us. So we should have acceptance. It is our business if we're discriminated against in health care, in employment, in um, um, housing, which many of these people want to do. That is our business if we believe in liberty and justice for all Americans. But right? what people do with their bodies is none of our business. Mm -hmm. Laverne, you said something really important that we have always existed. And because of your example and your advocacy, young people now grappling with these questions about their identity have someone to look to. Yes. When you and I were growing up, we're around the same age. We yeah. didn't have that. No. We didn't have people to look up to. So I'm curious for yeah. you what it was like growing up in Alabama. What was it like for you? What was it like to you to not have these examples? It, I, I mean, there were suicide attempts. There was a tremendous amount of shame. I was bullied every single day. I, had, I was chased home from school. I was beaten up multiple times. There were no trans people on television. And what I did see was deeply disparaging. Mm. I didn't want to be trans. I did everything I could not to be trans. But I'm trans anyway. I grew up in an environment where there was no education about trans people, yet I was still trans, and yet I found my way. Media represents, you know, stopping education about trans people doesn't stop us from being trans. And we, I know, because I'm 50 years old and I know my history, that trans people have always, at various ages, have gotten access to gender-affirming health care, but they've gotten it on the street. They haven't gone to a doctor to get blood work. They haven't been able to do it in a healthy way. Just like with abortion, people will have abortion Will they do it and be able to do it in a healthy way? Right. Becomes the question. You're connecting it to women's health, which is what I prefer to call abortion because it's Absolutely. a woman's choice, Absolutely. what form of health care, part of the medical care for women. It's the same issue. It's limiting what doctors can provide to individuals who have made a choice. It's even referrals. So in Arkansas, as well as this new law in Oklahoma, if you refer someone for gender affirming care, that can become a felony now, mm -hmm. just to refer someone. So they don't want trans people to exist. That is really what this whole project is about. And you can't make us not exist. That just doesn't work. And, and I also want to, and this feels hyperbolic, but I thought a lot about it. And there's been a rise in anti-Semitism all over the country right now, and it's disgusting and it's horrible. People should know that um, one of the first things that the Nazis did, and I think it was in 1933, was they burned Magnus Hirschfeld's um, gender for se um, um, sexuality. Magnus Hirschfeld was studying um, trans people, LGBTQ people. Lily Elby, who um, the Danish girl, the film The Danish Girl was about, she had her first gender-affirming procedure at Magnus Hirschfeld's clinic. The Nazis burned it down. All of this research. And there were um, LGBTQ people in concentration camps stamped with pink triangles. So in this moment of a rise of anti-Semitism, we see this rise, this documented mm -hmm. rise in anti-trans legislation and rhetoric. These are not a coincidence. So we 
as we fight anti-Semitism, as we fight for reproductive rights, we have to fight for trans rights as well. And they're on TV every day. We need to be more vociferous. We need to be more um, engaged in this. And I know trans people are a small part of the population, but it is not unrelated to everything else that is happening. Yeah. This is about justice and bodily autonomy for everybody. It's about freedom. You've We're done, Americans. Yeah. We should be about freedom. You've done a good job making the connection for sure. And just before you go, what's next in your career? Just oh. really quick. Oh my gosh, I'm shooting a show um, produced by Norman Lear called Clean Slate. We're shooting that later this year. It's the first show that I'm, I'm producing, that okay. um, scripted show that I'm producing. I'm continuing to host the red carpet for oh. Grammys and, and Oscars. Uh, and nod to James Cameron. Learn yes, exists <laughs> um, right here. Gosh, yeah, there's a lot of my podcast is coming back on the Laverne Cox show. Yeah, she's okay, busy. Okay, Laverne Cox, <laughs> thank you very much for thank coming you. on this morning. Thanks, we appreciate Laverne. you. Thank we'll be you. right back with much more Morning Joe.